This military parachute survival kit is really interesting, and we're gonna be opening this up and giving each item a very unique score. Now this scoring system is far from what you call standard, but hopefully it'll be fun. Here's a spoiler alert, the kit is missing some really critical items that I cannot believe the US military forgot to put in here. And there's one item in this kit that's gonna make you wonder what they were thinking all together. And if you make it to the deep end of the video, there's a bonus. <laughs> Let's get into it. These parachute survival kits were issued to people from the Vietnam era all the way up into the 80s. The bag that this comes in is actually sewn closed, so we have to rip it open to see what's inside. A little foil mylar pouch. All right, so we wanna keep this pouch intact if we can. All right, inside we have, oh yeah. Check that out. Inside we have a list of contents and um, a couple of real meager instructions. Packaging is pretty good for this. It kept everything dry, rust free, the fire starters all work. So for that, I'm going to give it five GI Joe guys because it did a great job. I can't see a way they could improve this and keep it light, waterproof, etc. Good job, good job, yay! This is 20 feet of snare wire. We'd use this to create snares with or make tools around camp. 20 feet is not a whole lot, but at least it's something. This is actually the perfect type of wire for a snare kit. This would be great for ensnaring small animals, catching rabbits, squirrels, other rodentia. Make a small loop in the wire like this. And if you're making a spring type snare, you'd maybe take a two feet off of this and loop the wire over on itself and then just start to bend it back and forth. Basically moving it back and forth like this really, really fast will eventually cause it to break. You don't need wire cutters to cut wire. Now this kit doesn't come with any snare locks, so the snare is just gonna open itself back up again, but you still have a good chance of ensnaring something with a spring snare because when the spring snare trips, it's gonna put tension on the snare and pull the animal up into the air. Tangle, mangle, strangle, and dangle. Those are the types of ways you can procure game in the wilderness. This would be tangle, strangle, and dangle. Three in one. Please note it is very illegal to snare game almost everywhere. So uh, only in an emergency situation should you be doing this. And if it is legal to snare game where you live, then do it in the right season with the right permits and do it humanely, don't be stupid. So the wire gets five GI Joe guys because it is absolutely perfect in my opinion. Next we have a button compass. Now this button compass uh, looks like it's pretty accurate. Button compasses are what they are. They give you a very general direction. Your belt buckle could throw them off. So be careful how you use them. Hold them very flat in your hand, away from your body. The button compass gets a three out of five. It does a great job being what it is, but what it is isn't that great in my opinion. So it gets a three out of five. It's just, it's just okay. It's compact and it works. Next we have four fire starters. These are little fire starter cubes. These are probably not waterproof fire starters, so we'll see. They look like bullion cubes, but they're, I know that they are fire starters because I'm looking at the uh, contents package here. So we have four of those, so that's pretty generous. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the fire starters, all right? Uh, don't do this at home. I have three fire extinguishing methods within reach of myself right now. Do not do this at home. This is for science. These have what looks like a little bit of red phosphorus on them as a means to light them. So I'm assuming all I have to do is just strike these on the provided striker and it will start on fire. But first, I really wanna see if these are waterproof. So I'm gonna dunk this sucker. And I don't think that that red phosphorus is waterproof, uh, but we'll see. Ah, there it goes. Beautiful. And it goes out. <laughs> Okay, pulling out the clipper lighter. Let's see if we can get it to light. So it doesn't seem like it's super waterproof. So I'm gonna cut this open and expose some of the inside of it and see if I can get it to light then. These would give you a lot of trouble if they got wet, so they're not waterproof. I'm just gonna give this to GI Joe guys because it does work, but it's not completely waterproof and it would need to be. In my opinion, they should have dunked the entire thing in paraffin, and then you could scrape away the paraffin to get to the igniter, ignite it, and then the entire thing would be much more robust. It still smells like matches down here, except a really, really big match. Like, ugh, the smell of red phosphorus in the afternoon, you know what I mean? <laughs> and this is hilarious, but pretty practical. We have a non-lubricated condom. Now this would be used for water transportation. You could go and fill this up with water, 
and uh, take it back to camp or whatever. You can carry water in these. So always good to practice safe survival. This says it expires nine of 2004. So yeah, it's been a while since this has been appropriate to use. Woo, this looks like it is pretty old and dried out for sure. Wow, this is kind of melted together on itself. I'm not sure it's still viable to use. I think the answer is this will not work. <laughs> it ripped apart instantly. <laughs> These things do have a shelf life. Toast. Okay, well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The condom. All the technology that the US military has to put to bear on this project of making a survival kit. Why in the world did they choose a condom as a water carrier? One, it doesn't carry very much. Two, it's difficult to drink out of it. Doesn't have any form to it, so it's difficult to actually use it. Well, maybe because they thought it was durable. The condom is gonna get a three out of five. Why? Because it is adequate. It's, it would do what they intended it to do, but I don't think it's going over and above. I think they could have maybe put a little more into that solution and made it better. I think that's pretty funny. So now the fun part, they give us a really cool knife and it's wrapped in scotch tape. Uh, they don't want those blades to come open when you hit the ground, apparently. Wow, this tape is really on there. There's two gigantic needles, big sail needles, that are taped to the knife here. Okay, so this is our small knife, and it is pretty sharp. It's got nail nicks, so you can get it out. That's our main blade. So, made in China, this is a Jaguar. Jaguar knife. The lockup is terrible on it. And there's a third blade. Not too bad. The lockup is a little sloppy, but uh, it's very sharp. It'd be a decent knife. I know you've been wanting to talk about this knife and congratulations for making it to the deep end of the video. Seriously, I really appreciate you watching and supporting the channel. And if you want to support the channel and the work that I do on it for you, a few bucks a month and you are supporting the channel and you get some fun perks too. If you are a member, you get the Plague Doctor badge next to your name. My brother designed it. For the comments section and the live chats, you get custom emojis and I'm gonna be making more of them. And the best perk in my opinion is you get access to my videos ahead of time, days, sometimes weeks in advance, before anybody else gets a chance to watch them. So you can watch them and comment on them before anyone else gets to see them. That's pretty cool, right? It's very exclusive. Supporting the channel allows me to put more time and resources into making the channel better in every way, plain and simple. So there you go. I hope to see you around with that little Plague Doctor badge next to your name. Okay, let's talk about this knife real quick. This knife has a clip point blade, which has a point on it, which is excellent for making uh, holes in wood, leather, plastic, whatever. Usually these are spay point blades. This looks like a drop point blade, little one. Um, and this is a sheep's foot blade. They all have nail nicks. So what these blades would be used for is the sheep's foot would be great for carving where you don't need a really sharp point. You don't always have to go for the largest knife blade on your knife. Um, use those smaller blades. They're more controllable. For what it is, for when this kit came out, so context, I think it really just barely checks the box of being an adequate survival blade. It gets three G.I. Joe guys. So part of the loadout that these guys would have would be one of these, which is a, a light marker. It's a distress light marker, infrared, and you would just basically turn this on and point it up towards the sky, and somebody flying over would be able to see this flashing. Um, I tried to get this working, but the bulb is completely shot in it, unfortunately. So I might rebuild this, put some LEDs in there just for fun. It'd be a really cool and very nerdy project. You know, nowadays we just have the little Garmin SOS button that we can push and search and rescue will come find us. But back then they didn't have that. So that was their personal locator beacon back in the day. Awesome. That gets five GI Joe guys. In here we've got some matches. They gave us 10 wooden matches wrapped in two different layers and they have given us two extra strikers. So. They really want to make sure you don't lose the strikers, which is nice. Let's see if these super, super old matches will actually work. There you go, first try. How about it, huh? Way cool. It's really cool to see that the matches still work after all these years. Yeah, let's talk about these matches. Safety second. It's not safety first because safety first would not be doing the dangerous thing at all, so. Now I'm gonna dunk it in water real quick. Quick dunk. Ah, they're not waterproof matches. Why not? It is so easy to dip these in wax and get so much better waterproofing out of them than they have. So don't understand that choice. The matches get a two out of five because they could have been dipped in paraffin or wax, bumped up the number to a maybe a, a three or four. 
That'd be nice. Big lifeboat matches would be really nice in a kit like this. So just two G.I. Joe guys. They've given us four fish hooks with leaders on them and you use the parachute lines. You take apart the parachute lines, the paracord, and get the threads out of there to use as fishing line. The fish hooks are fish hooks. That's all I have to say about that. They get a four. So here is what we are obviously missing. We are missing water purification tablets. There's none in here. For the size and weight that it would take up, I'm really shocked that those aren't in here, like a couple of iodine tablets. So I read somewhere that in kits manufactured from 1962 through 1971, they actually contained six iodine tablets in a small glass vial. I have no idea why they stopped putting them in the kits. So the kit gets a big fat zero when it comes to water purification. Zero. Boo. Hiss. These two needles are pretty gigantic. You would not sew yourself up with these if you had a, a cut or something like that. These are absolutely massive. This would be used for repairing gear, I imagine. So almost certainly you would have parachute cord with you if you were in a survival situation with this kit. So you would take your parachute cord and gut it and you would get all these strands inside of it that you could use for fishing line or if you really had to, to suture yourself up. But that would be unbelievably painful with the size of these needles. These parachute strands actually have three threads inside of them so you can separate them out one more time. The needles are awesome. They are also huge. You might use them for lancing a wound or something. I don't know. They're, they're, they're enormous. The thing is, they have to sort of be enormous because the paracord needs to fit through them. So I get it. But also, well, what would you what would you use it for, practically speaking? So the whole kit gets a score of three. It is just barely adequate. I, if I could give it a two and a half, I would give it a two and a half. The parachute would be your shelter. The paracord would be your cordage. So it's okay. I'll give it a two or three. Is there anyone watching this video that went through SEER training? I would love to hear what you think about this. So there you go, that's what was in a survival kit for airmen back in the Vietnam era, all the way through the 80s. What other kits should I find and look at? What would you put in this survival kit? Hope you found that useful, or at least entertaining. We'll see you later.